Hello, my name is Andre Rosier, and this is Havoc Boxing. Hello, we have two very special guests today, middleweight contender Curtis Showtime Stevens and welterweight prospect Saddam the World Kid Ali, gracing us for the show today. Fellas, how you feeling today? Pretty good. It's a little hot outside, but I'm feeling good. Okay, is it as hot in the ring as it is outside today? You know it. Okay, good. <laughs> well, to, to begin with, I want to ask you guys, what got you into boxing? Well, for me, I started boxing when I was eight years old. Um, I had a lot of sisters and cousins that lived downstairs. So I was around a lot of girls, a lot of females. So my dad wanted to take me to a man's sport because I was playing little girl games, honestly, <laughs> like pity pad and, you know, just duck, duck, deuce, running around. You know, just, my dad wasn't, he was like, you know what? I got to take my son to, to a manly sport. I can't have this keep going on as he gets older, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went to the gym one day and... Actually, I went to karate school at like five years old. That's what that's when I started. And um, but what really got me into boxing was I was watching Prince Nassim Hamed, which is a British Yemeni boxer, and uh, he he inspired me to start boxing. I mean, he was a guy that dances, that comes to the ring. He was exciting. He was a great fighter. He was fun to watch. So that's what motivated me to start boxing. Oh, okay. And how about you, Curtis? Um. I started boxing when I was five years old because of you. You're my uncle. So you took me to the gym, you know. You know, so I, I, liked, I liked the sport as growing up, and that was my career. Okay. Now, what's your record? What's your professional record now? 24-3 and three with 16 knockouts, I believe. Okay, and how about you, Sadal? 16-0 and 0 with 10 knockouts. Okay, you guys are definitely on the cusp of reaching the fans as world contending titleists. Definitely. I mean, that's that's what we aim for. When you when, you, when you're in a sport like boxing, you want you got to be at the top. You want to be number 1. So you work hard for it and you got to prove that. So that's what we're trying to do. When was your last fight? My last fight was October 27th. Okay, and how about you, Curtis? Uh April 20th. April 20th? Yeah. And uh, who did you box? Ronald Warrior. I, um, I don't really remember names like that, <laughs> uh, the fighters that I'm fighting right now, but <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to remember names. But uh, Ronald Warrior, he was uh, somebody that came in. I finished him off quick. Very uh, good. Second round knockout. I uh, was under my own promotions, started my own promotions. And uh, just to keep myself busy so that I won't be sitting on the shelf unsigned, and with no fights and not getting any experience. So that's why I started my own promotion. So that was that was my last fight. Okay. And how about you, Curtis? Uh Derek Superman Finley. Mm -hmm. Uh good good eight round matchup, you know. I was box I was boxing more usual than than normal, you know, because I couldn't I couldn't get the knockout for some reason, you know, but maybe if I'd have listened to you a little more in the corner, the knockout would have came, but you know, we have our ups and downs, and got to go back to the drum board and just get it back all right. So the next time, August 3rd, we're going in and just handle business the right way, check in and check out. Sounds like a great plan. By the way, uh, these two young men are, are my students, and for our show, I'm speaking in the third person, so don't, don't get it twisted that we are not dealing with boxing. We are, but... I don't want to refer constantly to the fact that I am their trainer. Right now, I am the host. So, uh, Saddam, where do you see yourself 
in your next five fights? Um, I see myself with the, the top, with the top elite boxers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm at the stage where I'm ready to step up, so I'm just looking to rake, to make the right move. Right. So I definitely see myself in a good position. Uh, where exactly? I'm not sure, but where it's at, I'm ready for it. Okay. And how about you, Curtis? Will you see yourself in the next four or five fights? Um, right now I'm uh in the uh, top 10 in the world. So uh, hopefully I get a title shot within the next two fights, you know, making sure that main events just put me in the right spot. And uh, a world champion, next five fights, I, sh I should have my title that I've been dreaming about since I was five years old. And we're going to be great from there. In the lineup, in the hodgepodge of numerous title opportunities and belts, which of the titleists right now do you see yourself getting at first and which one would you actually like to be in the ring with when you do win a world title? Uh, me, per se, Gennady Golovin, because he, they say uh, he's the most feared uh, middleweight in the world right now. So like, I, like I've been saying, you know, he's, in my eyes, he's been fighting, uh, blowing up uh, junior middleweights that's coming to middleweight. So now I just want to see how he sits there and handles uh, a power of a, a natural middleweight instead of a, a, someone that's being blown up to be a middleweight. Someone who is scaling the weight classes to the next level yeah. and, and representing that middleweight whereas they should be junior middleweights. Correct. Correct. Okay. And Saddam, out of the welterweight champions who currently possess belts, where do you see yourself uh, in the lineup, and who would you most want to fight to win a world title? To be honest, <clears throat> I've been asked this question before. Um, as of right now, I'm not really in a position to call anybody out. Um, anybody who got a belt, basically, to me. You know, I don't have any names uh, or picking anybody out. Whatever opportunity I get and whoever it happens to be, I'll fight, you know. So who's ever at the dance, let's get it on. Huh? <laughs> whoever's, whoever's dancing, I'm dancing. Let's I dance do with like him. that. I definitely do like that. Now, with the politics of boxing as they currently are, uh, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to climb that ladder if you don't seem to be in the right place at the right time with the right people behind you. I mean, we all know that the politics of boxing have been somewhat fliggity jiggity to say the least. But with that being said, do you think at this point in time, with the way that you're moving as a self-promoter, your road to that success is going to be far more difficult? First of all, promoters are not going to want to put you on their cards if you're going to keep winning and bettering for yourself. But at the end of the day, you're not signed a contract with them and you can leave them at any time. So if they're going to give you a fight, it's going to be one or two just because they want to check you out and mm -hmm. possibly sign you. But if you're not signing with them, eventually they're going to stop giving you those fights. And because you're a free agent, you're going to be stuck there trying to figure out what you're going to do. Nobody wants to work with you unless you sign that contract. Which but it true. just which, which depends if you're ready to sign. You know, mm -hmm. that's the thing with me. I wasn't ready to sign. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I took the route by myself. And I had to end up starting my new promotions because my own promotions because it got even harder. Right. But, of course, my intention is to sign with somebody because that's, that's the right thing to do. You just got to sign with the right person. And at the time, I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to switch to trainer mode for a quick second. Now, being that you are traveling a, a far more difficult road, you know that you must always be prepared. So how do you keep yourself on that a list on that upswing so that you're always ready to box well one thing you got to stay in the gym and you got to stay focused one thing with boxing you you can't you can't let things distract you too much um and this is why i have my own gym which is a good thing uh, i don't have to depend on somebody opening the gym i can go whenever i want so that's very helpful so i'm in the gym monday through saturday sunday is the only day i get off and I happened to be at a talk show with my coach, <laughs> which is great. Um, he wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> uh, Curtis, let me ask you a question. 
you you were a storied amateur. When you turned pro, a lot of people expected big and wonderful things out of you. Uh, the road has been a bit bumpy. Tell us what you have done to correct those imperfections in your career and what we can look forward to now that you seem to be on a really good track. Um, you know, I, I didn't fight for two years, so... And why was that? Uh, promoter, promoter disputes, you know, mm -hmm. now on the same page, you know, and, and not in very... Everyone that's on your team is not necessarily on your team, mm -hmm. and I might say. But um, I didn't fight for two years, you know. I was training, I'm watching all my amateur guys win titles. They're on HBO, they're on Showtime, everyone is just fighting except me. So, you know, I asked my mother, I'm like, Mom, like, what? She's like, she told me to pray. So I started going to church, started praying, you know. Then eventually, like, you know, I got out the contract. I fought, um, I fought one time. Then I fought again. I, I, won, the, I won the belt, the NABF uh, title. Then I signed to main events, you know. Then now the road is just, you know, it's all paved golden. But I just got to stay on my, uh, my grind and my hunger to, to just let myself know it ain't over just yet, like, you know? So I always sit back and, and say to myself, remember that two years when you was off, when you was crying, when you wasn't making no money, and when you just watching TV? Because it could, it could happen again by the little, the little least little uh, mistake of me not being trained very well or I think this fight is going to be easy. So now I just look at boxing, a whole different type of mindset. Plus, I have a son now, so it's not even like for me anymore. It's more for him than it is for anybody in the world. So I just got to stay on my grind and just keep grinding and grinding and grinding until, until I get what I got in the game for. That's become unified middleweight champion of the world. A very daunting task, but uh, I honestly can say from watching you two men participate in the sport of boxing that it's easy for me to say that you two are destined to be world champions. If I'm speaking from this day forward, I could say, well, you two men will have uh, world championship belts around your waist. That's what I'm expecting. Um, we all know that you have to give 150% in boxing. And with that being said, uh, the way the scope of the professional world is right now with all the politics and, and the, um, the back and forth and everything else, the, your razor's edge has to always be 100%. Now, with, with the fight game as it is, and actually in this year, 2013, the fight game has gotten a little bit better. There's some better matches taking place. There's some more competitive, exciting things going on. Um, I would like to know what you think will make boxing even more exciting, even more exhilarating. And of course, I'm one for knockouts. And who is going to be putting heads to bed in the next um, in the next coming months in the bouts that are taking place. Well, most boxing fans love to see knockouts. Right. So that, that's that's the most exciting thing about boxing. People want to see, it's not, that, it's not that they want to see somebody get hurt. They just want to see something exciting. And when you whenever you see a knockout, that's exciting. I just think, <laughs> um, I just think uh, more TV nets to cover boxing. Mm -hmm. You know, like NBC came in. And, you know, if we can have more TV nets to cover more, more events. More exposure for the sport. More, yeah, more exposure right. for the show. And um, let the heavy hitters on a little bit more. Mm -hmm. people, the people with punches, let them fight because you know you're going to see knockouts like that. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, but the, the most importantly is TV Nets to cover it a little bit more. You know, show the support and, and, and let it shine. Oh, how, how do you feel about that, Curtis? What do you think would help to improve uh, what already seems to be... Uh, a great year of boxing, mm -hmm. what would make it more exciting, more exhilarating, and, uh, and um, we're looking for, to see those fantastic knockouts. The right, the right fights with the right people, mm -hmm. the right matchup, 
because because what you have is some of the fighters like that they're not making uh, good fights. Say you have you have like we just Lamont uh, Mathesy. Like you know Lamont comes to fight, Mathesy comes to fight. But we all know Mathesy was a is a knockout artist. Like you know then and he prevailed by knocking him out. So I believe the right matches with the right people. Like you know like I said you have a Janati Eleven knockout artist. Curtis Stevens, knockout artist. Two knockout artists. Somebody's bound to get knocked out. You know? So oh, that makes sense. Like, you know, so just got the, the right the right matchups. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe the favoritism of uh, promoters with cer- certain fighters. Because now, nowadays you have who they want to make champion and who they don't want to make champion. Or the I, the, the, I put it in terms of they give fighters the Sugar Ray Road. Then you have people... Like me, that has the Hagler role, uh-huh. that got to come up and earn my earn my championship belt. That's when you have fighters that's fighting no ones and <clears throat> getting belts. So, True. the uh, I call it the flicky, like you say, flicky jiggy. Flicky jiggy. <laughs> so you know they just gotta uh, be straightforward and make the make the make the mega fights instead of the fights that they think people that fights that uh, they think people want to see when they really don't. Right. That that sounds that sounds like a great direction. Let's hope that uh, the boxing world picks up on it and heads in that direction. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, Saddam. What's your best punch? Um, <clears throat> I will have to go with my left hook. Okay. I don't I don't know what it is about it. Uh, <laughs> I, most of my knockouts has came from my left hook, and I, it's not that I was expecting. It. For it to be a knockout, it just happens. Did we I sort just, of develop it that way? I think we did. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> honestly, I used to never have power, and you know that. Uh, I was always, I was always speed. I was real fast, but now I have speed and power. And honestly, I wasn't sure if I was gonna have power, but I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm growing into a man, so that that man power is kicking in. Your man so strength, huh? My man, my man strength is kicking in, and uh, it feels, it feels great. Because as a professional. You need power. I'm sorry. You can have speed all you want, but you need some power as well. Um, just in, in, in pro boxing, you need a lot. You need a lot. You need you need speed. You need power. You need heart. Um, you, you need a lot of bullets in your gun, huh? You need a lot of bullets in your gun. You got to have uh, great condition. Uh, y- your head's got to be real smart in the ring. You right. can't just go in there thinking to stone a whole bunch of punches. People got to recognize that. Boxing is not just going in and being able to punch or being able to throw punches. Boxing, that's why Mayweather is so good, because he's smart mentally in the ring. He thinks in the ring. And that's one thing you got to do. You got to think in the ring. Okay. How, how about you, Curtis? What's your best punch? Oh, this hook right here. This patent and left hook. But to tell you the, like, to tell you the truth, though, like, I can hit you with anything. You're going to go down, like, you know? Mm-hmm. But like I always tell you, Uncle, you know, if you go down, you get up, I'm coming for the kill. So I, and my best... And the eyes that I, I should tell the fighters, just stay down. You better off staying down. <laughs> but left hook though. Okay. Left hook. And Saddam, to date, what has been your hardest bout? What's been your toughest bout? Um man. As a professional, you mean? Yes. What's that guy's name? <laughs> it must have been pretty tough if you forgot his name. <laughs> no, I, I told you, I just I, I don't remember names. I mean, I might remember names as I get further in my career and start farting, fighting people like, you know, Matisse or Madonna or even Mayweather, which would be great because mm-hmm. I'll be rich. Nah, <laughs> but, uh, you know, names like that I won't forget, you know, because they, they, they're well known. But uh, there was this one, the one fighter, which I dominated, but I got hit clean with a left hook, okay. I, and uh, like I oh I haven't mentioned this in pro boxing you need a chin. Yes, you if you don't got no chin, I'm sorry <laughs> you're not really getting far in, 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 in pro boxing because it's no headgear and the gloves are even smaller. So right, that's one thing. So I got hit with a real hard left hook, which not not everybody, but a lot of people will probably take a knee over a left hook like that. You know, they'll, they'll get up from it. Right, but it was it was a very hard shot, but. Uh, I felt like a little wobbled, you know. I, the crowd just went crazy because they were surprised, and uh, but surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, but um, I recovered very well. Um, not everybody has good recovery, 
Pro boxing, you need a good recovery. Yes, you do. Some people get hit, get hit clean, and they don't know what to do when they get hit. It's like they lose it in their head and they get hit again and then they get stopped. Well, thank God I have a great recovery. And uh, when I got hit, it's like it's like I seen everything in slow motion. I just knew exactly what to do. I knew when to make a miss and when to hold. That that part is very important. You can't just when you get hurt try to hold right away. You're gonna run into another punch. Right. Or you can't get hit and try to hit him back real hard or just to get to get out of it. It's just that's why I say you gotta you gotta be real mental in the ring. You gotta be smart. And I must say you did handle yourself well in that particular bout. Thank you. I know you remember <laughs> it. Yes, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Havoc Boxing. Oh, what a left hook. First Arab American to represent the United States in the Olympics. <laughs> 200 amateur fights, two-time national Golden Gloves champion. Tom Ali, workers promotion is bringing boxing to Brooklyn. Hand speed, cutting shots, accuracy, Ali is peppering Edmonds. Well, fellas, it was great having you here. I'm pulling myself out of host mode and I'm going back into trainer rope, trainer's mode. And we're back in the gym on Monday getting ready for when's your next fight, Curtis? August 3rd. Where at? Mohegan Sun. And who's your opponent? Uh, Saul Roman. Okay. And what, do, what should we be expecting from you in that bout? Uh, well, we had a talk the other day. So you said, if I don't finish him in two, I got a problem. So there you go. <laughs> All right. It's a dom. When's your next bout? <laughs> well, my next bout should be uh, in early July. Okay. And uh, my opponent, I have no clue. I never do. <laughs> you have just, the famous TBA to be announced? <laughs> to be announced. I go okay. in there and I handle my business. Uh, Very good. And I'm ready. Very good. Well, these two young men are part of my future. I'm very happy to say these are my nephews, Curtis Stevens, Saddam Ali. My name is Andre Rosier, and this is Havoc Boxing. And we are in the Hurt Business. See you next time.